Welcome to the newest episode of my complete Factorio tutorial series. Today I'm going to tell you everything you need to know about multiplayer in Factorio. In this tutorial I will show you how to set up a Factorio server running on your PC and how you can join such a server. A Factorio account can be required for playing online and I'm going to tell you what such an account is and how you can obtain one. I'm also going to tell you what forces are. I won't, however, show you anything about hosting a dedicated headless server, because this will remain to be a topic for another video. You will need a Factorio account if you want to browse the public server list or to set up a public server. A Factorio account is also required if you want to download mods from the official mod portal or if you want to update the game. You already have a Factorio account if you bought the game from the official website. You can also activate the Steam version by logging into the Factorio website with your Steam account. This is used to make sure you bought a legit copy of the game, as the game itself has no piracy protection built in. Please note that I will refer to the PC which will host the game as server and all PCs which will join the server as clients. Playing together with friends can be lots of fun, but before you start you need to check two things. The Factorio version and the used mods. These two things need to be the same between the server and the clients at all times, otherwise you won't be able to join the server. In the game menu under Play, Multiplayer, you can set up a server in three different ways. You can create a new map, you can load an existing map, or you can host a scenario. You just need to choose the option you want to use. Then you are greeted with the menu to generate a new map, to choose the map you want to host, or the menu to choose a scenario you want to play. Now you have the same menu, no matter which option you chose. Here you can set up the server's settings. Starting from the top, there is a server's name, a description and whether you want the server to be visible on the public server list or on a local network. You will always be able to join via the public IP address of the server. Max players defines the maximum number of simultaneous players connected to the server. Ignore when returning lets returning players join the server even if it's full. Max upload defines the maximum rate at which the server is allowed to upload data. You should only touch this option if you know what you're doing. Defining a password is helpful to protect your server against unwanted guests. The password needs to be entered by everyone joining the server, no matter which method they use. You can define some tags for easier visibility in the public server list. The autosave interval defines how often the server autosaves the map. If you want to autokick players after a specific time, then you can set an RFK autokick time. With the next option you can define who will be allowed to use console commands. Only admins can pause is important to stop people from randomly pausing the game. Autosave only on server tells the clients not to save the game automatically. Players still can manually save the game, so they are able to play alone on the map later. Enable non-blocking autosaving does some magic trickery to not stop the game while saving it. I heard it has the potential to screw up save files, so I wouldn't enable it unless you know what you're doing. Backing up your save files is also always a great idea. Lastly, verify user identity. If you turn this option on, then players who want to connect need to be signed into a Factorio account to be able to connect. For using the public server browser, however, you need to be signed in anyways. There is also the option to run a headless server. Starting the game in headless mode disables loading textures and automatically loads a specified map. There is also a special package available for Linux servers. On Windows you can just use the normal version of the game. I won't go into more detail here, but if you are interested in more information about how to set up a headless server, I advise you to check out the wiki. I will probably create a dedicated tutorial about this topic in the future. Please note, if players should be able to join the server via the IP address, then you probably need to configure your router to forward the Factorio port 34197 to your server. You can easily find out your IP address by googling for what is my IP address. Joining a game is pretty straightforward. Depending on the settings of the server, you need to use the appropriate option. If you want to join via the public server list, you may need to use the search bar to find the server. Joining via LAN is pretty simple too. 
Joining via the public IP address of the server is necessary if the server isn't available in the public server list. You don't need to specify the port if the server uses the default port. If both players are playing on the Steam version, then you can simply use the join feature of Steam to easily join another game. Forces allow for PvP and combat playstyles. Each force will have an independent research queue as well as progression. The spawn point can also be different for each force. Depending on the settings of the scenario, turrets of one force will attack players of other forces. Each force can contain one or multiple players. There can be multiple forces at once. The easiest way to play PvP is to just use the included scenario. You can also download more scenarios from the internet. That was already pretty much everything I have to tell you about the multiplayer component of Factorio. If you still have questions, then feel free to ask them in the comments down below. If you learned something new, please leave a like and also subscribe, so you don't miss out on any new videos and tutorials. Feedback is also always appreciated. Have a great time, see you all next time.